We are all aware of the importance of diversity in the workplace. You may even understand how critical it is for high-performing teams. Many of us believe this is solely the focus of executives or human resources. You may wonder whether you hold any power to enact change or promote diversity within your daily operations. Well, grab a cup of coffee and let's chat about ways you can start making a difference today. I'm Tina Marie Baugh. I have over 25 years of hands-on experience in technology leadership. I aim to provide practical insights so seasoned tech experts turned managers can bridge the gap between their technical prowess and leadership excellence. There are three areas in which each of us, regardless of our role within our IT teams, can make a difference regarding diversity. Inclusive collaboration, mentorship as well as advocacy, and continuous education. Let's dive into these. The first area in which we can make a difference is inclusive collaboration. If we have multi-company experience, we've probably realized the challenge with diversity in IT. According to the National Center for Women and Information Technology, 27% of the IT workforce are women, 3% of whom are women of color, 7% are Asian, and 2% are Hispanic or Latina. The fact that these numbers have not moved much in 20 years is a discussion for another time. This means our teams and meetings are likely 73% men and 27% women. Think about the last meeting you were in. What was the mix of men, women, bigender, non-binary, and other genders? What were the various age ranges? Think about all the races, ethnicities, and disabilities represented. How diverse was the meeting? How about your last three meetings? Inclusive collaboration is a method of working together that intentionally includes the diverse contributions of all team members, ensuring that everyone's perspectives are heard valued, and integrated into the decision-making process. This method helps bring to the front the benefits of diverse viewpoints. How can we, as IT leaders or individual contributors, make a difference when it comes to inclusive collaboration? Practice a round-robin approach in meetings. Have you ever been in a meeting and one person dominated the conversation? In contrast, have you ever been in a meeting where the leader ensured everyone had a chance to speak? Big difference, right? We want to ensure everyone's ideas are heard. If we are inclusive, allowing everyone to contribute and speak, will enable us to hear from everyone's point of view. Someone mentioned to me the other day that he was colorblind and could not see what I was referring to when I said the red part. I was a little embarrassed and then grateful. I felt so bad that I had not considered this in developing the report. And so thankful that he had mentioned it so I could add shapes and numeric labels. If we had not given everyone space to speak, it may never have come up. It may seem small, but how would you have felt if you could not read a report upon which I was basing part of your performance? 
Second, use virtual collaboration boards to their fullest extent. Many of us have tools such as Microsoft Teams, Slack, Trello, and Asana. They are quick communication tools and project management solutions, but they also have so much more to offer. These tools can provide equal footing for remote workers, ensuring everyone has access to the same information all the time. This also allows everyone to see all communications within the system, which ensures everyone's voice is heard, regardless of seniority or location. There are accessibility features in these tools, which makes them usable for people with disabilities. Lastly, they facilitate different working styles and ways of thinking. Explore the tools with the team and see which team members respond to which features. The third way to support inclusive collaboration is note-taking rotation. Have you noticed that sometimes it is the person who takes the best notes who gets stuck taking them all the time? This has a few impacts. First, we may accidentally stereotype people because they have feminine qualities or are subconsciously stating they are of lower rank in the company. Second, we are saying they have the time. Taking and sending notes takes time. Let's not pretend it does not. Editing and sending notes after a meeting usually takes 15 to 20 minutes. If this same person is being asked to do this role for four meetings a week, this is an extra hour of work a week. The best way to encourage inclusiveness is to recommend that note-taking be rotated at every meeting. I find using a standard template, rotating the responsibility by last name, and having the expectation that the notes will be sent within four business hours works for most teams. It is essential to set expectations up front. When I have made these recommendations, very few teams have resisted. Make this about spreading the workload, not the individual. And most people respond well. By incorporating these practices for inclusive collaboration, we acknowledge and harness the collective intelligence of diverse teams. The second area where we can promote diversity is mentorship and advocacy. Mentorship doesn't require a title. It requires initiative. I'm not recommending you start some vast program. Here are two small things you can do to promote diversity through mentorship and advocacy. First, have an inclusive insight exchange. You can pair with colleagues from different backgrounds to exchange skills and broaden perspectives. The goal is to share what you deliver for the organization, your skills, and significant job functions. You want to focus on the overlaps between your two worlds. Inevitably, you will share how you got into your careers and your backgrounds. You will develop a relationship. This exchange broadens both of your views. The second way to promote mentorship and advocacy is spotlight sharing. If you're recognized for your work, share the spotlight with a colleague who contributed but may not be as visible. Sharing the spotlight helps build an inclusive culture 
strengthens collaboration, emphasizes collected achievement, and allows you to practice a little humility, which is a valuable quality in a leader. These actions don't just uplift others. They build a culture of collective recognition and shared success. The third area where we can promote diversity is continuous education. A personal commitment to education on diversity is crucial. Part of continuous education is to engage with and seek out diversity-focused content intentionally. This could be by subscribing to diversity-focused YouTube channels, podcasts, or newsletters to stay informed and aware. This type of content is readily available online. Just be sure you check the source. LinkedIn Learning, Udemy, and many professional organizations offer courses. Your company may have an engaging diversity, equity, and inclusion, or DEI, program. However you go about it, understand that this is an evolving landscape and requires investment of your time and energy regularly. The second recommendation is around bias awareness and involves the use of inclusive language tools. We are IT people after all. (laughs) We can use the latest AI software to analyze and improve the inclusiveness of our communications. There are many ways AI software educates and prompts us to remove bias in our writing. The most common is the prompting to use inclusive language. For example, replacing gendered terms like chairman with chairperson or you guys with everyone. My favorite tools are Grammarly and the Hemingway editor, but many more are available. Try a few and find one that works for you. Being proactive about self-education and bias awareness can ripple out to influence the whole team positively. If you want to dive deeper into this topic, I highly recommend the book, The Loudest Duck, Moving Beyond Diversity While Embracing Differences to Achieve Success at Work. Author Laura Liswood talks about getting past the Noah's Ark paradox and getting to diversity of thought, which is the end game after all. There you have it. These are three significant areas where you can start making a difference in diversity today. Inclusive collaboration, mentorship, as well as advocacy, and continuous education. Diversity isn't a challenge to be overcome, but an opportunity to embrace. It makes us better at what we do. It makes our solutions more comprehensive, our teams stronger, and our work environments richer. Remember, each of us is a vital part of this journey. Let's lead by example and make our industry inclusive for all. If you have any questions or need further guidance on IT leadership topics, please leave them in the comments section. If you enjoy these videos, please subscribe by clicking the TLD logo and check out our other learning videos. Remember to keep your eyes on what done looks like for your customers and your leadership journey. Let's keep learning and growing together. See you next time.